of course, Britain is responsible for our external affairs, but that's not the point because, um, you know, what the chief minister said in an interview with Christine Vasquez is that uh, it was not possible. In answer to the to the sort of question of, you know, wh why didn't you why didn't you to sign this this agreement? this international agreement, well, he says, well, you know, we, we, we can't sign it because Britain is responsible for our external affairs. It's got nothing to do with me. It's, it, the fault is in our constitutional status, and we therefore need constitutional reform. And our point is this, very simple. Uh, uh, this was an, an, in, an international agreement on the issue of tax uh, and exchange of information. Gibraltar has, in fact, signed international agreements on the issue of exchange of information uh, before our constitutional status has not been a hindrance. Uh, what the, the constitutional mechanism to achieve that is for Britain to give an entrustment, what is called a letter of entrustment, to the Gibraltar government to allow you to enter into those agreements. And last week, in rebuttal to uh, the Chief Minister's statement, I issued a press release and indeed I, uh, I put links into that press release which, uh, and screenshots of uh, agreements that Gibraltar has entered into with the United States, Germany, Australia, Portugal, France, all directly. Um, so it is a nonsense, with all due respect to the Chief Minister, to say that there cannot be international agreements on tax or exchange information signed by Gibraltar, because we've done it before. The issue here is that Spain refuses to recognize Gibraltar, and that very uh, fact is the reason why this agreement was not entered into between Spain and Gibraltar. It was entered into between Spain and the UK because Spain refuses to recognize Gibraltar. Now, I know that you've covered this point before, but um, the Chief Minister argues that the, the mere existence and fact that the tax treaty is in place is Spain, to some extent, recognizing Gibraltar's jurisdiction. Well, I mean, again, it's a really warped uh, kind of logic because just because there, are, there is an agreement which uh, reaches into our, our tax uh, laws or, or changes the dynamics of, or, of tax does not mean that they've uh, recognized the competence or indeed the ability of Gibraltar to enter into agreements. That it's, uh, in the reverse is so for the, for the reason that I've just indicated. The fact is that this uh, agreement is intrusive and it's harmful. That has been our line from the very beginning that this agreement was signed and we don't resolve from that fact. Indeed, a lot of the arguments that were put by the Spanish minister who presented uh, the, the, the government's position in, in the Spanish Cortes makes clear that they, they view it as a weapon to hit Gibraltar and again the old uh, tired arguments of fraud uh, and uh, criminality and money laundering are all held at Gibraltar as usual. You have said that um, there is a mechanism by which Gibraltar can sign tax information exchange agreements with other uh, countries such as America and Germany, but uh, this is a tax treaty. Uh, it, that, that is, I suppose, a, a different type of document. This is the first such treaty uh, about Gibraltar uh, between the UK and Spain that has been signed since the Treaty of Utrecht. Is there something of value there? It's important not to get uh, sidetracked by red herrings. If you look at the front page of this, uh, of this agreement, it is called an international agreement. There's, no, there's nothing to suggest in the form of it that it is a treaty. It is an international agreement in the same way as the agreements with the United States, Portugal, France, and Germany are international agreements. Those agreements, the, the, the ones that I've just mentioned, are on tax information exchange. The agreement with Spain is both on fiscal issues and also on information exchange. This is about form, uh, and you can enter into international agreements of whatever nature, as long as you have a constitutional entrustment letter that allows you the ability to do so. The government of Bermuda sign regular agreements across a variety of fields, not just in tax or information exchange. They do so in relation to tourism or anything else with other governments of the world. They do so under letters of entrustment. It is, that is not a hindrance to entering into international agreements. And the reason that this agreement, I repeat, was not signed by Gibraltar is because Spain does not recognize Gibraltar. 
you have repeatedly criticised this agreement as not being good for Gibraltar. The Chief Minister has said that if there's nothing for people to hide, then we shouldn't fear transparency. Well, again, it's a red herring. I mean, of course we don't fear transparency. And indeed, cooperation and so on with any international, with, with, with any nation. There's no issue with that. The, the, point, the point that we make about the, the tax agreement is that it is not a normal tax agreement. When you look at any uh, double taxation agreement, you look at the tax agreement that the United Kingdom itself signed with Spain, you have a very different dynamic. It is a neutral and fair tax treaty that does not penalize companies or individuals. The tax agreement that has been signed with Spain in relation to Gibraltar is not of that type. It is intrusive and harmful. It is completely different. When you put these two agreements side by side, and you know, we we're going to have a full debate when we have our motion debated at the end of the month in Parliament, when you put this agreement that that the Gibraltar government has been willing to consent should be entered into on behalf of Gibraltar, it is entirely different to what is a neutral uh, and fair tax agreement with another nation that is entered into uh, normally on an OECD model. It is, a, it is completely different. This penalizes Gibraltarians, even when they return to their homeland, they are still treated as tax residents of Spain for four years, if they have been living there, it uh, unless they it, returned prior it, to the it, date, it does not. Specific. Yes, it does not uh, treat um, companies as resident for tax purposes on a normal basis. I mean, normally, when you look at the UK Spain agreement, uh, a company is taxed depending on whether it has a permanent residence in a particular country. So, if it would be taxed in Spain. If it's management and control, it's, it, if it is permanently resident in Spain. Here, if the shareholders of the company are living in Spain, even if the company has no activity whatsoever in Spain and has all its activity in, uh, in Gibraltar, it can be subject to the Spanish tax system and presumptions and the adverse presumptions. And so we think this is a disincentive to inward investment and really a bad tax deal. If we were to accept your position on the agreement, could it still be the case that it was the right thing to do in the context of the Brexit process and um, what it might have allowed Gibraltar to, uh, to continue doing in that process or to avoid, um, for example, a hard Brexit without being part of the withdrawal agreement and being in this transition period now? Well, let's be clear. The, the government has never sold this tax agreement to people on the basis that we don't think it's a good deal, but we have to enter into it because it's the price to obtain certain things in the context of the withdrawal agreement. Um, that's not their position. Their position is this, the, this was not a price, this was a good deal. And what we are saying is this is quite clearly, when you analyse it properly, a very bad deal. Uh, for Gibraltar. It does not uh, deal with uh, the fiscal issues like a normal tax agreement would and we see no basis for it. If the government's position is that this was the price for having the withdrawal agreement extended to Gibraltar, well then it should say so. But that would be different to the way that they have argued it for two years. And you're saying it's a bad deal. Have you got any sort of um estimation of, of what the financial uh, cost could be? No, it's, impo it's impossible to do that because, because the effect of it is simply to penalise local people, uh, create presumptions, adverse presumptions, change the, the fiscal dynamics and also is a disincentive to inward investment. So it's impossible to prove what kind of business you would have done had the treaty not been there. But very clearly, it's going to operate as a disincentive for anyone to establish business in Gibraltar in the way that we have become accustomed to. Taking all things into consideration, do you think that Gibraltar is going to be poorer and worse off as a result of this agreement? Well, we are certainly going to be affected by, by the agreement. Um, and it's impossible to say uh, how negative an effect it will have on the economy. But we've got to analyse it. You know, uh, our analysis has to be on the basis of 
you know, is this a good or bad deal for Gibraltar? We take the view very clearly, it's a bad deal. We've been consistent in, in our position. Uh, we, we think it should not have been entered into in this form and it should be replaced by what is a more standard version tax agreement. Leader of the opposition, Keith Asopardi, thanks for your time.